Welcome to part 23 of my Teo Black Widow Mods videos. I know I said I was going to install this in between the videos, but unfortunately I am having a bit of a problem. You see there are these two holes, actually there are three holes on this, but two of them might go through this plate. Holes and these are supposed to align up with that, but because of the precision piezo sensor that I'm using, unfortunately this is way too thick for it to slot through here so the solution should be pretty simple and it shouldn't really take that much time for me to print and apply, uh, mount this properly but I thought you should be aware of that so just in case you have a similar combination like this so. I now have the layer fan installed as you can see here I haven't plugged it in yet because it's a 5 volt fan I need to adjust the voltage through the duet firmware somehow I'll get to that in a second and after that we will do some test prints with this and do our comparisons to the older MKS Chan board and see how much I've improved by making these few changes including the duet Wi-Fi, the changed motors, etc. a few more changes as well. Right now I wired the fan to the controller as you can see and there was a problem that the fact that this fan is 5 volts but this fan is 24 volts you can normally select the voltage on the duet Wi-Fi for the fans, but uh, the problem is you can only select one voltage and as I said I have two different voltages. Because of that I had to... It's, it will be a hard shot, but yeah, there you go, there's 4.9 there. I had to wire that buck converter for the layer fan in between the normal connection and it goes to the fan, but otherwise everything seems to work. I will obviously test this pretty soon, but I don't want to waste any more time on this video, so the next update you will see will probably be the comparisons between the current setup and the setup before I upgraded to the Duet Wi-Fi. And here it is, my first non-test cube print from the new Duet Wi-Fi. And while some parts printed out the way it's supposed to be, as you can see especially on the front, there are a lot of issues. My current assumption is that some that has to do with something like the acceleration settings on either of the X and Y axes or maybe the extruder. But I'll have to diagnose that, but I'll do that later. But before I get to that, I decided to finally work on the uh, the AM 2302 sensors I don't know how long it's been since I bought these but I think well it might have even been like a single digit episode I don't exactly remember but if you remember I had a few problems with these then you know some other project got the priority and I kinda forgot about these so yeah it's time I get back to the testing and installing these these are basically temperature and humidity sensors that communicate with the Raspberry Pi and that will allow me to monitor the temperature inside the enclosure just in case in the future I decide to do incorporate a environment heater or even if I don't decide to do so it will allow me to monitor the humidity just because of the health of these filaments so yeah it will be pretty useful and another thing that I'll do while I'm at it is to figure out how to get this LED strip which I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show now. Oh, there you go. I'll try to get that LED strip wired into the octoprint as well, just so I can toggle it on or off. So, yeah, there is a few things to do with the octoprint. So, anyway, I'll get to that and then show you the results and then move on to fixing the issues with the printing and doing our comparisons. So, I have some good news and bad news about the upgrades that I just attempted. Firstly, I'm going to start with the bad news, which is the AM2302 sensor. Uh, my pro problem last time, at least in my in theory, was the fact that I was using very thin wires and using a few extensions to get to the sensor. I thought the 3.3 volt from the Raspberry Pi was dropping below what it's supposed to be. And so I thought by just replacing that with thicker wires or plugging it, in, it into the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt output, would actually solve it. That's why I 
was pretty confident that I was going to get this thing to work, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. I still can't, can't get this thing to work, so I don't know if my sensors are somehow faulty or there is something wrong with my setup. If you have experienced something like this and figured out a solution, let me know in the comments below, but otherwise, yeah, this upgrade probably won't happen ever unless I somehow stumble upon a good solution to this problem. But I also have some good news about the other upgrade, which was the LED light. So, as you can see, I've added the LED here. I also named it LED1 because I will in the future control the other LED light in the enclosure as well. But as you can see, if I click the button, sorry, I didn't click it. I can toggle the light on or off. The only problem is that, as you can see, the button is labeled in inverse. It's right now on, but it's assuming that it's off, and it says the button says turn on, so it's reversed, but it's not a big deal, as long as it works, it's fine. So, that brings me to the two other things that I want to do with the Octoprint. First of all, I, I don't know how I managed to do this, but I inserted this button, well, mounted this in reverse, so I can't feed filament through here but I can't feed it through here it's because the metal piece on top of the switch is aligned that way so I don't know how I screwed that up but I'll fix this and the other thing is I want to relocate this camera to somewhere more useful if you've seen some of my latest time-lapse footages you'll not you would have realized that you really can't see anything from this angle it's not really useful I used to have it here before I did this filament system upgrade and it used to have a good angle of the print pad but obviously I can't put it here anymore but yeah I need to figure out a better position for this so I'm, this is the next thing that I'm going to work in this video I'll try to figure out a good position for that I might just mount it on the X carriage and live with the added weight of that but I don't know that doesn't seem to be ideal I'll try to find a good solution to that. I now relocated the camera to here. Basically I just used an old spare corner piece that I had and just mounted the camera on that. It's not an ideal position because it's in the way of getting to the printed objects but at least it gets a better angle of the printed object and yeah you can see on the screen right now I'm just going to put up a time lapse. You can see that how much better it looks compared to the old time lapse. You can see them side by side. So, yeah, this definitely improved the time lapse pr problem that I had, which is also good because I also use this for monitoring the 3D printer. So, yeah, the last thing left in this video is to do our comparisons using the 3D Banshee and the Control V torture test. And that's probably what I put up on the screen right now in terms of time lapses, but. Yeah, I'll need to fix that, obviously by the time you see the next update, it's done. So, yeah. So, I've been working on trying to get uh, some decent prints for quite some time now. Uh, these aren't just failed prints, by the way, these are just, I just cancelled these after I realized that they were bad. And unfortunately, I didn't manage to get anywhere. I spent most of my time pretty much all of my time tinkering with the acceleration, speed, instantaneous speed changes, etc. Those types of settings and then started a new print. And you know, considering that something that printed this high usually takes about two hours, uh, you can see that I spent quite a bit of time on this, more than a week's worth of time. Uh, if you actually consider that, you know, I don't have all day to work on this, but unfortunately, I got nowhere. I have one more printing right now in the machine, but yeah, I'm not sure if the camera is going to be able to show you that or not, but yeah, it's not printing properly either. That's bad too, so I'm going to cancel that. So yeah, my theory right now is that uh, it's nothing to do with the acceleration or speed or any of those settings. 
and it's either that the extruder motor isn't working properly because of the higher resolution it just can't keep up but more likely what I'm thinking about is that the layer fan design that I'm using currently isn't good enough or either that or the fan that I'm using I am a fan of Noctua fans as I said in an earlier video but the particular fan that I'm using isn't really the best in terms of airflow it's a 5 volt fan it's very silent and it doesn't really turn at high RPM and because of that it might not provide enough airflow for the print so unfortunately I don't have another 40 millimeter fan that I can test to make sure so I'm not going to be able to test that yet and I don't really have any other option at this point so I'm going to have to end this video here uh, sorry for not making as much progress as I hope to do but you know Murphy's law everything that, that can go wrong will go wrong and it certainly did so yeah sorry about that but I still hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a like down below and thanks for watching